All right, gamers, let's turn back the clock and dive into a time when games were simple in concept, but brutal in difficulty. We're talking about the era of arcade cabinets, quarters, and blistered thumbs. Enter Ghosts and Goblins, a game that didn't just break controllers, it broke spirits. This was a game where your knight in shining armor was often left in his boxers, desperately dodging zombies, ogres, and dragons. Oh, and let's not forget all this while trying to rescue a princess because, well, that's just what you did in the 80s. Developed by Capcom and hitting the arcades in 1985, Ghosts and Goblins was the Dark Souls of its day. But why? What made this game, with its deceptively simple 2D platforming, turn into the stuff of legends and gamer nightmares? This game was more than just a quarter eater in the arcades, it was a rite of passage. With its relentless difficulty, Ghosts and Goblins quickly gained notoriety. But it wasn't just hard for the sake of being hard. There was a method to this madness, a design philosophy that weave challenge and reward into an intricate dance. And let's be honest, who didn't feel a sense of pride when they finally beat a level, only to be crushed moments later by the next? So let's jump into our digital time machine and explore the pixelated world of ghosts and goblins. We'll uncover its secrets, its challenges, and just why it's still remembered today. Grab your lances, don your armor, and let's get ready to battle some supernatural baddies. Jumping straight into the bubbling cauldron of its creation, Ghosts and Goblins didn't just magically appear in the arcades. Oh no, it was the brainchild of Tokuro Fujiwara, a name you might not know. But let me tell you, this guy is the Quentin Tarantino of early video games. He's the mastermind behind not just Ghost and Goblins, but other classics like Mega Man and Resident Evil. Yeah, talk about a killer resume. So what sparked the idea for this nightmare of a game? Well, Fujiwara wanted to create a horror-themed game that was challenging but not impossible. Spoiler alert, he may have overshot the not impossible part just a little bit. The game drew inspiration from European folklore, horror films, and even some classic fantasy elements. Imagine a blender filled with knights, zombies, and a dash of universal monsters. Blended at high speed and voila, you've got ghosts and goblins. Now, the team behind the game was small but mighty, working within the technical constraints of the time. We're talking about a time when game memory was measured in kilobytes, not gigabytes. They had to get creative, using every trick in the book to bring this ghoulish world to life. And the results? A game that wasn't just a technological feat, but a work of art. And here's the catch. They didn't just want to make a game that looked good and sounded spooky, they wanted it to feel spooky. The kind of spooky that had you on the edge of your seat, frantically jumping over gravestones and ducking under flying demons. And let's not forget the infamous Red Aramur, a creature so annoying that it probably haunts the dreams of many gamers to this day. In a time when arcade games were all about high scores and quick thrills, Ghosts and Goblins stood out. It was a narrative-driven adventure, albeit one that most players never saw the end of. It was a game that didn't just want your quarters, it wanted your soul. Or at least, it felt that way after your 100th attempt at the first level. At first glance, it looks like your standard run and jump platformer. You've got your knight, Arthur, gallantly bounding through the graveyards and demon realms. But beneath this deceivingly simple exterior lies a game so fiendishly difficult it could make a grown gamer cry. First off, the game mechanics. Arthur could run, jump, and throw weapons. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. The game's physics were, let's just say, unique. Jumping felt like launching a brick into the air with a catapult. Once you committed to a jump, there was no turning back. And in a game where precision is key, this led to many untimely demises. It's like playing The Floor is Lava, but the floor is actually made of spikes and the lava is an army of the undead. 
Each level was a meticulously crafted torture chamber, filled with enemies perfectly positioned to cause maximum frustration. The levels didn't just challenge your reflexes, they tested your patience, memory, and sanity. And just when you thought you had a level figured out, the game would throw a new curveball at you, like a red Aramur swooping in at the worst possible time. With each level, the game ramped up the challenge, introducing new enemies and obstacles that required near-perfect timing and strategy to overcome. This wasn't a game you could simply muscle through with brute force. It required finesse, strategy, and probably a little bit of luck. But here's the kicker. The game was so difficult that even if by some miracle you managed to reach the end, the game pulled the ultimate troll move. It set you back to the beginning, claiming it was all just an illusion and you had to beat it again to see the true ending. Yeah, because uh, what's better than beating one of the hardest games ever? Doing it twice. Despite, or perhaps because of its difficulty, Ghosts and Goblins became a hallmark of challenging gameplay. It set a standard for what a hard game could be and inspired countless gamers and developers alike. It was a game that didn't hold your hand. It chopped it right off and laughed as you tried to play one-handed. But in that challenge, there was a sense of achievement that few other games could match. And this didn't just leave a mark, it left a scar. When Ghosts and Goblins hit the arcades and later home consoles, it was like a bomb went off in the gaming world. Players were simultaneously enamored and enraged by its punishing difficulty. At its release, Ghosts and Goblins was met with awe. The graphics, for the time, were groundbreaking. The game brought a gothic horror aesthetic to the arcades and living rooms, which was a stark contrast to the more common, bright, and cheerful games of the era. It was like walking into a haunted house instead of a fun house. But what truly set Ghosts and Goblins apart was its reputation as one of the hardest games ever made. It became a badge of honor to say you've beaten it. Gaming magazines and playground talk were filled with tales of woe and triumph related to this game. It was the Dark Souls before Dark Souls was even a twinkle in the game developer's eyes. The game's influence didn't stop at just being hard. It inspired a whole genre of challenging games. It showed that there was a market for games that didn't coddle players. That challenged them to improve and think strategically. In many ways, Ghost and Goblins laid the groundwork for the modern roguelikes and hardcore platformers we see today. But let's not forget its impact on pop culture. Arthur, in his knightly armor, or his boxers, became an iconic character. The game spawned sequels, spin-offs, and even made its way into comics and cartoons. Alright, let's switch gears and talk about the unsung heroes of Ghost and Goblins, the graphics. You see, creating this game was like painting the Sistine Chapel with a limited color palette and a chiptune choir. The developers were working with hardware that had less computing power than your modern toaster, yet they managed to create a visual and auditory masterpiece. Ghosts and Goblins had a distinct style that was both charming and chilling. The game transported players to a gothic world filled with graveyards, haunted castles, and eerie forests. Every sprite, from Arthur in his armor to the tiniest zombie, was detailed with an impressive level of care. Remember, this was the 80s. We weren't dealing with high definition graphics, we were in an era of pixels big enough to see from outer space. Yet the game's visuals were so well crafted that each character and enemy was instantly recognizable and brimming with personality. But it wasn't just about looking good, the game's visuals had to be functional. With so much happening on screen, clarity was key. Players needed to differentiate between enemies, projectiles, and the background, all while dodging and weaving through a nightmarish landscape. It was a balancing act between aesthetic and playability, and Ghosts and Goblins nailed it. Now let's peel back the curtain and take a peek at the secrets and easter eggs hidden within this deviously difficult world of Ghosts and Goblins. This game is like an onion. Peel back one layer and you find another, and probably a few tears as well. Ghosts and Goblins is not just about running and jumping through a graveyard, oh no! It's got more tricks up its sleeve than a magician with an extra large coat. 
There are secret weapons and hidden points that can be uncovered by attacking certain spots or jumping in specific areas. Discovering these secrets often felt like finding a, a hidden treasure chest in a dungeon, a small reward for your suffering. But the game didn't just hide goodies, it also had entire levels. That's right, there were secret paths and levels that could only be accessed by performing certain feats or taking specific routes. These hidden stages were not just a pleasant surprise, but also a way to mix up the gameplay, offering new challenges and environments. It was like finding a secret door in a haunted house, only instead of leading to safety, it led to more nightmares. Which brings us to the end of our pixelated journey through the haunted lands of ghosts and goblins. We've battled through graveyards, dodged red aramers, and uncovered the game's secrets. But what's the takeaway from all of this? Why does a game from the mid-80s still hold such a special place in our heart-shaped health meters? The enduring appeal of Ghosts and Goblins lies in its blend of relentless challenge and unmistakable charm. It's a game that didn't just test your reflexes, it tested your resolve. In an era where games are often criticized for holding players' hands, Ghost and Goblins stands out as a monument to the toughest nails gaming of yesteryear. In the end, Ghost and Goblins is more than just a game. It's a piece of gaming history, a challenging adventure, and a story of triumph against all odds. In a game that asks, do you have what it takes? And for those brave enough to answer the call, it offers an experience that's unforgettable. So grab your lance, Suit up in your best armor and get ready to take on the challenge. The world of Ghost and Goblins awaits, and its secrets are there for those daring enough to uncover them. Happy gaming and may your armor stay intact. If you enjoyed our deep dive into the history of Ghosts and Goblins and want to see more from the Retro Reload, click this video here.